Any questions before I close? Okay, Rush, come on up. Do your. Uh, Rush is going to talk about a couple of things that he does out of trips and what he believes in out of trips. And then he's going to just answer some questions. This guy in here, uh, I met him just a second ago. There he is right there. Had probably the best point sitting back here that I've heard the whole clinic. He's from South Lamar. <clears throat> and he said something. I wrote it down. It's old. I'm going to write something down. I forget it. And I normally forget where I write that down. Write it down. Um, <laughs> new clients. Something I think is very important. Am I on or not on? Um, the question was, do you believe that you can run this system in the high school or smaller high school? Well, I was at Asheville for six years, um, 3A school. We did not run it at Asheville. Do I believe you can? You can? Yes, I do. I think you can run it at any level. I don't think that's a question. But he had a great point, and I think this is important. I do not believe that for guys that are just now starting in the system that you can do no huddle and the new offense. If it's offense is completely different and new huddle is completely different, you're going to bog down. So my, your decision has got to be based solely on that if I'm going to teach the offense first, I'm going to teach the offense first. Okay? Now, to, 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 if you're, if you're well-staffed and your coach is going to work tireless hours and you're going to bring them in there like I do when we first started at, at Hoover and, uh, and when we did it, Brian, or, and it's 5 o'clock every morning until 10 o'clock at night and you're going to get everything done and you're going to bring your kids up there all summer long and all spring and, you know, do all that stuff, yeah, I, you might can do it. You might can do it. You know, I mean, I've been abbreviated... I'm going to abbreviate it some in the All-Star game. I'm head coach of the Alabama Mississippi game this year, and I'm gonna, I, we did it in 2001 in a 10-day period. Not 10-day period. We had a mini camp for two days and then obviously seven days. <clears throat> and I thought it was by the end of the last part of the week before we could get pretty decent at it. We're only talking about four or five plays from that standpoint. So can you do it? That's something you've got to decide yourself that if you're not comfortable in no huddle, I've been no huddle a long time anyway. I played in a Noah Huddle High School in a system in, in 1973, 74, 75, and 76 at Ohatchee High School. My high school coach was a Noah Huddle guy. If y'all remember, some of you old guys remember Livingston had won the national title in uh, 71, Robert, 71 or 72. Ricky Seal and uh, Willie Slater run the Noah Huddle wishbone attack, and I remember it. Had a two quarterback system. Well, my high school coach sort of adapt, uh, adopted that philosophy, Noah Huddle. And, and we, we were a no huddle offense back in the early 70s. So I played in a no huddle system. So you, you've got to answer that question for yourself. How strenuous is no huddle for you as a coach? Then you've got to commit to your players. Obviously, that's who's got to play the game and then put in the whole system. My, no, another suggestion is I wouldn't, when I was at Bryant and I went to this stuff, you know, we only huddled, I asked David Faulkner a while ago, we only huddled uh, when we were in the gun. You know, we wasn't full gun all the time at Bryant. So that was in 98, 97 and 98. So uh, obviously I, that, was, that was a little different too. Uh, I didn't go full no huddle until I got to Hoover. Until I got to Hoover. And I could, you know, and, and I know Tony, Tony is, is he's, he's right by saying that I'm paranoid, but the bottom line is, I'm in a league to where, and I'm not discrediting anybody in here, but I just damn believe that them guys at Mountain Brook, them guys at Vestavia, them guys at, uh, there's two or three schools in this state, they're damn, they're, their folks are sharp. I ain't talking about a little bit, I'm talking about a lot. A lot more sharper than some of them defensive guys in the SEC. And the clientele of kid they work with is a hell of a lot smarter too. You know, our average ACT is about 25. And that's average. You know, with our starters, you know, on the offensive line one year, we had three kids in 2000, 2001, it had 30 on the ACT. That's pretty damn, pretty intelligent. Well, them guys, that you go in there, you take that band, for example, and you start calling out a couple of those damn things like what, and I'm not discrediting what uh, Sonny said last night, run, run, 34, run, run, 34, shit. Best David going to hit you in the mouth. They're going to know exactly what you're doing. 
to inside and out. Now that's a truth. I mean, them, them guys over there, they're they sharp. And they know their players are smart, and they understand things. And they understand us. And uh, obviously, I'm not telling the fib. They, people have filmed our sideline. You know, I've caught them doing it. And, uh, and, you know, we had to change signals. That's why I went to the band. And so, and, and we were, I was a signal guy. Um, you know, 95 was 95. That was 95, back in the old days. That was 95. You know, Kenneth was with me, he remembers that. But we, we knew, and we, we'd, we'd gotten word, and we knew, and then I finally had some inside information and knew and they were filming our sideline. And then we knew that when we did that, that it wasn't in them defense over there hollered out 95, why cross, why cross? You know, people knew what we were doing. And they didn't figure it out in about the second time I did it. They had to have figured it out some other time. So we had to change and go to the armband. And no, we don't change a lot on the armband. We do change from half to half. Where Bucks 2 may be 95 the first half, Bucks 2 will be three zone the second half. You know, we do do that. I'll, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you about that. We do change it. Now, do we change it every quarter? No. We got a little paranoid that first year when we got caught with a hand in the cookie jar a little bit and people were knowing what we were doing a little bit. So we did change. And, and I think that's why Joey and them at Mountain Brook, Robert, I think that's why they're so sophisticated. And I, Joey, Coach Jager is more paranoid than I am about it. And their system, you couldn't figure it out if you had it on the sideline. I mean, if you had it on the sideline with you as a defense coordinator and you're trying to figure out what Chris and Joey's trying to get in the game, you can forget it. You could have it right there and study it a week you couldn't figure it out. Because there, you talking about sophistication, there it is very sophisticated. So, you know, it, there's, there's different ways to do a lot of different things. So, I, I, my, going back to the original question, just be very simple in what you do when you're starting this thing. We've evolved in a lot of different ways. I'd say we're probably right now not, we're about 33% of what would, you, what would you learn this weekend. We've sort of evolved in some other, we've gone in a, a little bit different direction, which that doesn't mean what we're doing here is wrong. What we're doing here is right. It's just we've, we've just evolved in some other things and have taught it a little different way. And, and, and again, like Matt told you yesterday, he constantly fights me and, and uh, David Faulkner and Marty Roselle and those guys because we're always adapting and changing, adapting, change, adapting, change. So we do do a lot of that. So, you know, that's just the way it is. Trips. <clears throat> uh, I think the biggest thing, and I, and I will, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it, um, and then I'm, over it. I'm just going to open it up for question and answer and what you want to ask me, and then I'll go over it. But here, here's my thought process on the trips. And I go back to tell you, when you're playing a subpar opponent, subpar, or you're a subpar opponent and you're playing opponents pretty good, there's two lines of thought here. One is the high school hash is different than the college hash. It's wider. So when the ball's on the hash, you're sitting yourself into a situation where you have a distinct boundary. And you've got to have a distinct boundary offense. And you've got to have a, a field offense. This offense, when it was designed, it, it's not designed for high school, the high school hash. I mean, it's, there's some things in it that can get you in trouble on the high school hash. So we've adapted a little bit of that. So, for, for example, the number one thing that we're going to look for when we, when we get into the hash, and obviously, you know, you, you, you're, let's just say we're in early, because we call it, now do we call it like that now? Not, all, not always, but that's for, for learning purposes right now, that's what, what we're going to call it. That's what you're seeing your books early. For us, it's a little different now. But when you're in early, you know, basically, I screwed that up. H is going to be somewhere on that hash right there. Right at, you know, we call it the one yard roof. He's going to be right there in hash, and he's going to be right there on the numbers, and then Y is going to be in between. Now, they got to make a decision on what they're going to do defensively. And the first thing that we see and we teach our quarterbacks, and I think you need to, is there a backside weak defender? Backside weak defender. That's number one, first and foremost. I'm going to give you the base generic which we don't see a lot of. Let 
We, just, we see that. We see 4-3, four, 4-man four front, or 3-2, doesn't matter. I mean, you know, 3, you know, we like to see a 3-man front, I'll be honest with you. That doesn't bother us at all, 3-3 three, three doesn't bother us at all. You know, but just talking about base 4-man four four line, and 9 times out of 10, for some reason, they put the 3 technique to the field. Why do they do that? Defenses do that? I personally think they do it because if they're not going to have an alley defender back to the weak side, it puts the backer in half, you know, mostly in, but the ability to get out of the box. The ability to get out of the box. A lot of times, they'll put that guy right there. Just sort of edge him right there a little bit. They'll do a little bit of that. All right, so our, our thought process is what are you doing to the back side first? Now, you notice I've got that guy sitting right there. Now here's something that's very good offensively for you. You can dictate that, what you want to do with F. Because when the, ball's, when the huddle's broke and you want to come here and he's sitting there, you know, the first thing they're thinking, well, they're going to run the screen or they're going to run the option or they're going to throw the football him there. No, you may have, that may have used to be. Because a lot of times now we'll start here, then we'll walk right back over here. And we'll see right there. We'll walk him right back. Or we'll start him there and we'll walk him over. That's the easiest adjuster you got is F. He don't have to move very far. And he can go back and forth depending on protections, depending on the play, depending on whether he wants to decoy or not, depending whether he wants to set a weak side defender or not set a weak side defender. So all that stuff right there is based on what you want to do with F, okay? Now obviously, we get in this situation, we're going to look at the field that way. There's a field, there's a field stuff with trips. They've got right now three defenders sitting to the field. Now obviously, the next crucial one to me is that guy. How is he, is he going to come out of the box? Where is he based on where your F is? How, what, what is he trying to do? Is he trying to stack here? Is he trying to get a little wider even with F? What is he doing? So that's your next thought process. And all I'm telling you today with trips is not plays. You, you got your own plays. You, I mean, I'll have to draw some plays up for you. But I mean, it, it's just you got to understand what they're trying to do with this, these defenders. There's box players, there's outside the box players, and there's guys that are in between. There's those guys that are in between. So the in between players are the players that you got to figure out what they're doing. I ain't got a problem with the guy sitting outside the box. Hell, I know what he's doing. He's outside the box. I ain't got a problem if he's inside the box, he's a heavy A-gap defender. I know what he's doing. It's the other guy that stacks on that three and sort of leaves a gap available, what we call gap available, or has the ability to get out of the box fast. Now, you've got to base your offense there. So start, first and foremost, with your alley. And then move across. Start, if the ball's on the left hash, shit you ain't got but 18 yards sideline. I think, is that right, 18? 17, 18, something like that. It's not much. I think it's what is it, in between 17 and three quarters, 18 to the sideline. So you ain't got but 18 yards from that dang center snapping the football to the sideline. So first and foremost, I'm the quarterback and I'm in the gun and I come up, I got my coach in the box. I got me, I mean, I got me on the sideline, usually sitting right here with the signal guy. And then I got a guy way down there looking at it from that view. So now we got view, view, Quarterback's view, view. Now I'm sitting there and we're looking and we're going to scan left to right from the left hash. Alley defender. Inside, B, he's thick in B gap. He's heavy in A gap. He's outside the box. He is the, he's a pass defender first. Cover two corner, check the safeties. Bam. So I've scanned, boom. And then I've scanned here. Now I'm looking, see where it is. Now we start formulating how we want to, what we want to do. 
Is it going to change? It changes based on what you do with the defenders. Okay? Does movement and stemming does it, do anything to us? Not anymore. Used to bother us a little bit. Now we got so, much, so many dummy calls and so many things that we do, usually we'll get you set where we want you, where, where we, where you, we want you to go before the ball being snapped. Now obviously you can, you can wait to the last second and then, and then stem late and come and all that stuff, but that's you know, after, after the snap count. Then that's when we get into, like Tony said, we get into NASCAR and Indian, this, that, and the other, and try to keep you from doing that. So there's ways to keep that. Again, don't let the defense dictate to you what you're doing. All right. The other thing that you've got, the next thing you want to look at, I think. Now, this is a two shell. That's a two shell. Okay. The next thing is no alley defender. There's no alley defender. There's no alley defender there. It's a three shell. Backers are still in the box. Backers still in the box, and they've walked strong safety down. Now they've walked that strong safety down, now it's more of a cover three look. And a lot of times, I kick it the other way. It's depending on what they do now. In a cover, again, we've looked over there, and that's, that's been vacated. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. And now, now we go and we decide. If this guy now, depending on what they do with this guy, a lot of times they'll leave him off the edge, sometimes they'll put him head up. Now, there's three defenders there covering your three people. I have a cover three shell. This guy is not a factor. This guy is not a factor. Now, but now there's still three defenders here because they ain't got anybody in the box. So, I mean, they ain't got anybody to the backside flat. Now, people are, people are starting to learn now to, to robber. You know, take that robber coverage where they take two safeties and they rob down. You know, they give you a two shell. And I'll get to that just in a second. But now that gives us the ability, again, whether we're going to put him there, or whether we're going to put him there, or what we want to do. Now, obviously, we'd love to attack this area. You know, if you're not going to put a defender to the backside, you know, we like, we like attacking that area. And you need to, too. Don't, and, and here, here's the thing about the hash, understand this. We don't say anything that makes any sense. Understand this. This is a long throw to this side. It's a long throw. Very long throw. If you're playing great athletes, you're playing into their hands. You're playing the great athletes, you're playing into their hands. You start taking your quarterback, and he's sitting there and he's buzzing his feet on quick game, or he's taking a three-step drop on 90 game, and he's scanning the field, and he's going through his read progression, and he's delivering the football, no one understand these are long throws. Defenders have the ability to break on the ball and make plays better. So when you get a three-on-three -three matchup, because I know what you're going to say in a minute, I'm gonna, you're going to say, crap, you're contradicting what you're saying. No, I want to make this point. That if I, if I got three-on-three -three to the field, it's tougher because of the defender's reaction time. To where to the, to the alley... To the short side of the field, I get a two-on-two -two game. I may attack a two-on-two -two game because it's short throws. If I'm sitting here, and I promise you, it's not more than this far. And you tell me I can take my quarterback, John Parker Wilson, who has, a, who has a great arm, and he can take the snap, and he can work from here to that wall with two defenders. Two-on-two -two game right here. He's going to win about 80% of the time. He's going to win about 80% of the time. Where when you, start, when you start throwing the football to the field, you start throwing the football to the field now, guys, 
You're taking some chances. And these are chances. These are chances here. That's chance defenses to me. That's defenses that, that, that I, better be, I better be damn sure that I know what I'm doing to this side or I'm going to run the risk of throwing a pick. And you throw the pick to the field, there's a damn good chance he's going to score with it. Okay? So, so understand the philosophy of what I'm telling you. There's no alley defender backside. They got everything kicked to the box, to the, to, the, to the field. Have you a boundary game? Have you a boundary game? I can sit here and draw you 25,000 things to do the boundary, but don't get that sophisticated with it. Just have you a boundary game, okay? And run a boundary game. All right, next. Which we get most of. We get, we get backside defenders. Very few people play us, don't give us a backside defender. They're going to they put somebody out there in that alley. All right, now, let's talk about alley player. Doesn't matter how you want to play it. Let's, let's talk about what we get most of for some reason. And he'll go, he'll go backer. Backer, backer. You kick the front, put the backer backside. Hey, he'll be nearly head up. He'll be outside tilt. And then you got that guy right there. That's what we get. That's what we get a lot of. So we get we're getting most of that. And that's what once you become and you and here here's you, you're making them defensive guys play in your hands a little bit now. You go in the game, they don't give you a backside defender. Wear their ass out. I mean, you go in that ball game and you throw about 85% of your passing game to the damn boundary. And, you do, you, and it may be 10, 15, 5, 7, 10, 15, 5. You do something down the field. You know what they'll do? Number one, when they put that guy to the boundary, they won't blitz him. If they do, you can figure it out pretty easy by what the, what the safeties are doing. And number two is... Then they won't blitz you to the boundary and bring it off to the short edge. And now you got what you want anyway. Now you've adjusted the field for yourself. Now what you got? He, he, he's what I call, he's what, I, he's what we tell our quarterbacks. He is, he's a free safety. He's a one. He's deep. But alert, 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 alert. What is that safety doing? Is he just guarding nobody? Or is he there for a purpose? What is he doing? Because in my opinion, that guy, that's where I played. I didn't do shit. I didn't do nothing, but I, my, my, my mom and daddy gave money to the program. I got to sit in the field and play free safety and backpedal and call cover three. The guy don't do nothing. So if, he's not, if, he, ain't got, if he don't have a purpose, if he don't have a purpose, you got an advantage. Because now look what you got. They got two defenders. They got two defenders. He don't bother me. You know who bothers me next? What I say start? Scanning from where? Left to right, right? I'm on the left hash. Scan left to right in the box first. What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? Well, I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. There's my big question mark right there. What's that guy going to do? Here's my question mark right there. What is that guy doing? He's sitting there in the box, but he's trying to get into coverage because of safety. And if he stays heavy in the box and we can run the football a little bit, they start moving that guy and they start moving that guy. That's what we want. That's what we want. They start moving this guy and working it. 
Oh, well, this guy over here, he's out of the play area. Basically, I got it what? I got two on two to the backside by just moving that fullback. It's safety over because the backer's in the box. So it's all about the adjustments. This guy starts working out, he probably stays in. This guy starts working over, he starts staying in. He starts staying in, he starts working out, and he can still get there, walk over, now go backside 2-2. Two, two. Now we got two-man game to backside. Obviously, that's where what comes in next. Empty. Now the empty package comes in. The empty package comes in. Now all that stuff, honestly, is, is the stuff that you have to adapt to in years and years and years. But I'm going to tell you something now. You think, well, shit, I'm lost now. You know you're not. No, you're not. Just take your, take your trips, take your trips package, or a doubles package, or a package, and have you a hash, have you a hash plan. Have you a hash plan. The best I've ever seen in high school football, in any, any state, anywhere, is obviously who we play, Mountain Brook. I've never seen anybody have a better hash plan. As I watched Joe and him play from 96. Robert can tell you, they do a great job. They understand it. You go to their practice, the damn field, their practice field got grass in the middle of it. It's beautiful. You can putt off of it. The damn hash got troughs on it. Got troughs on it. Because they never practice. They never practice in the middle of the field. Because only, you're only there about 20-something percent of the time. Got me? So they're on the hash all the time. You understand? So make sure you do that. And then this, this empty deal right there, that, that's so easy. But that's where that evolved from. Get what I want. Now I get the two-on-two -two game to the backside. You can do it out of empty. You can do it out of doubles. You can do it out of doubles. Doesn't matter. You can sit there, like I told y'all, some of y'all was at the clinic. Evangel, our big deal with Evangel was, is we would go doubles. We knew we couldn't beat them. We didn't run a 90 in the whole game. We ran the football. We threw short side stuff. We dummy called a lot of stuff to see what they were going to do because they're very smart. And they could stem, and they'd stem and stem and stem and stem. We'd get them what we want, and we worked the backside game the whole game. Just catch, throw, catch, throw, catch, throw, catch, throw, and that's how we beat them. So that's what I'm telling you. When it all fails, come back to that boundary and, and see what they're going to do with you, and then, and then adjust from there. Okay? Now, if you come back, and last thing I'll say, if you don't want to go empty, you want to stay trips, and they kept that guy in the box, now you got three on two to that side. You just, just create your combo routes out there, three on two. Three on two. Any questions so far? Tony, how much? How much you want me to go? Hmm. On tape? On tape, I'm, on, I'm done? It's fine. I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them one thing that I ain't on like our 91 game. There it is, right there. Like 91. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you an example about 91. A smash concept. Okay. All oh, your run smash. Everybody. Talk about adapting. We adapted this deal. We sort of stumbled over it. Over it at the at the middle of end of 2002, about game nine. We were throwing the screen so much, you know, the 141 51 screen out there so much. Yeah, they, they have this on their, I've shown it to them on video, they've already, uh, matter of fact, this is their plan. Exactly this right here? Yeah. Okay. So just 91, all you're doing now is you're reading that corner. Corner drops. He goes and blocks because he knows the ball's going out there. Corner comes up now, coaching point. Corner comes up, don't block him. It's offensive pass interference. No, you don't. Don't block him. Don't block him or you're going to call it. They're going to call it against us. And, uh, you know, I just met with officials last week. And you know what the number one emphasis next year is going to be in high school football? Offensive pass interference. Offensive pass interference. It's just like Perry, just like Perry talked about. Perry can get a... If you can get away with uh, set cut, you get, you, you, we have not been able to set cut 
in two years. Mm-hmm. All right, any questions on anything? Somebody had a, I know somebody else had a question. Um, somebody else had a question. Who was it? Had a question about, there was something else. Somebody asked me back there. Yeah. I, I, you know, like I told you, I just, 